I think it's important to know what's in your DNA spiritually, uh, sociologically, so you know what to avoid to not become that. So just because you have a history of divorce in your family does not mean that you have to do that. Just because there's a history of drug abuse and addiction in your family, I'm going to God and say, God, you're going to let me break this curse. The curse stops with me. You know, my sons will be the last crazy ones in my family. You know, God is going to do something different in my life as a result of my intervention in my own prayers. We're blessed to be a blessing. A life to make a difference. There's hope for my brother, hope for my sister. Life more abundantly. Friends, you're watching Living Hope, and I came today with a word of hope that no matter what's been threatening you, no matter what dissonance and chaos you've been in, you can get back to the road of happiness, back to happy by learning how to sleep like a baby. Today is part two of a message I preached on last week. This is a story about the life of Peter. It can change your life. Turn to Acts chapter 12. Let's get back to happy and let's learn how to sleep like a baby. You're watching Living Hope. That's persecution by a politician. But the people are praying without ceasing all night. Not an hour and a half, they prayed all night. Because Peter has become the Pentecostal preacher to the Palestinian prisoner. Uh, persecution by a politician, but some people are praying. But here's what blessed me. Notice that although a politician is persecuting and people are praying, notice here, Peter is peaceful. He has been delivered over to 16 different soldiers. He's bound with two chains. And Eugene Peterson in the Message Bible says, and the same night when he was going to bring him forth for the kill, that same night, Peter slept like a baby. And here's what convicted me. If Peter can be on death row, just witness Christ's crucifixion, just saw Stephen stoned to death, just heard about James being beheaded, and the next day Herod is going to try to kill him. But with all that, he has enough peace. That he's sleeping like a baby. You mean to tell me Peter can sleep while on death row, but you can't sleep because of a low-down supervisor? You mean to tell me Peter can be on death row and go to sleep, but you're up all night long over a bill that you can't pay? If Peter can sleep like a baby while on death row, some of the little mess that we go through, you all learn how to put it in the hands of God and say, I'm going to sleep tonight. Is there anybody around here know he's still turning around? I'm going to sleep tonight. I believe Herod that night was wide awake. He had such low self-esteem. He wanted the people to like him. He was thinking they may make me a Roman emperor when I killed Peter. I believe Herod was wide awake. I believe the people in the land, the Jews, were wide awake, anxiously anticipating the death of the Pentecostal preacher. They were like children the night before Christmas, waiting for Peter's death. I believe the Jews, can't you see them, were wide awake. I believe that most of the jailers were wide awake because the Roman law had a code called the Code of Justinian. And that code said that if any prisoner ever escaped, the guard had to take the place of the prisoner. Can't you see them there? Drinking Red Bulls and five-hour energy drinks. Going up to get espresso shots from the Starbucks on Jerusalem Boulevard. Can't you see them there? I believe the jailers were wide awake. I know the church was awake. Because Luke just told us they were down there in verse 5 at John Mark's mother's house praying all night. For, for Peter, I believe Herod was wide awake. I believe the Jews were wide awake. I believe the jailers were wide awake. I know the church was awake, but 
Peter. Okay, y'all don't feel me here. Let me rewind that. I believe Herod was wide awake. I believe the Jews were wide awake. I, I believe the jailers were wide awake. I know the church was awake. But Peter, one more time for the sleepy folk. I believe Herod was wide awake. I believe the Jews were wide awake. I, I believe the jailers were wide awake. I, I know the church was awake. But Peter, the one who's actually on death row has enough peace. Prayer is not the bending of the divine, but is the human blending with the divine. Uh, one of the Greek words for prayer is prosuchi. It means to go upward in worship, to go downward in warfare, to go outward in work. And what I love about Acts chapter 12 is Peter, the Pentecostal preacher, has gone to a Palestinian prisoner. And yet while he's incarcerated with Herod the Group I, has an, atten an intention that on after Easter the next day that he's going to bring him forth for execution the same way he's just done James the brother of John. And yet while he was incarcerated, the church gathered at John Mark's mother's house and they ectino, the Greek word for prayer there, which meant that they stretched out and laid out in prayer in an all night prayer vigil on behalf of Peter. And I believe that prayer is so powerful that it is communicating with the divine that God already knows our issues, but we have not because we ask not. And it's not a matter of hocus pocus, it's a matter of going to God and communicating with God to articulate our needs to God. And when we do that, uh, we really can evoke the heavenlies in our, you know, because the prayers of the righteous avail much. Prayer is important. Uh, we can come boldly before his throne to obtain mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. And, and so I think one of the things that we've gotten away from, we've, we've lost a sense of prayer in many of our lives. I had to ask Peter in an imaginary conversation. I said, Peter, he said, yes, Dewey. I said, how did you have enough peace? Jesus just crucified, Stephen just stoned, James just beheaded, and tomorrow Herod Agrippa I is going to try to kill you, but you're sleeping? I said, Peter, how did you sleep? I'm trying to preach the apostolic with some people who need God to turn some things around. I'm talking to some people who may be going through some things and need a word from you, Peter, about peace. Peter, tell us, how did you sleep? He said, do it, I slept it for three reasons. I said, what were they? He said, number one, I slept because I had a past perspective about God. What do you mean, Peter, a past perspective about God? He said, well, you, you do know I was a preacher? I said, oh, yes. He said, when Jesus called me from a fisherman to be a preacher, we would go to the synagogues on Sabbath. He said, and one day, do it, Jesus took the scrolls and turned to a passage that said, behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither sleep no slumber. He says, so do it. That means that God is going to be woke. And so since God is going to be woke, I might as well. Can somebody testify or not? His eye is on the sparrow and I know he's watching hey. Hey. he don't need you keeping him no company say your prayers go to sleep because he got you got the eternal surveillance of God he said, he said do it he said um, I slept because I had a past perspective about God. He said, but also tell apostolic, but that, that not only did I have peace because I had a past perspective about God, he said, do it, tell them I also had a past promise from God. <laughs> past promise, Peter said, yes. It's in John chapters 20 and 21. I said, what? He said, he asked me, Simon, do you love me? Simon, do you love me? Simon, do you love me? Feed my sheep. He said, then, he said, do it before Jesus left. He looked at me after redeeming me and said, Peter, one day thou shalt get old. Read when you get, read when you get a chance. 
John 20 and in John chapter 21. He says, Peter, one day thou shalt get old. Okay. Peter, one day thou shalt get old. Shout, not a homily. Shout, not a simile. Shout, not figuratively. Shout, not hypothetically. Shout, not hyperbolically. Shout, not metaphorically. Shout, not imaginatively. Shout. Not possibility. Shout. Not potentially. Shout. Not figuratively. Shout. Literally. One day, thou shalt get old. He said, so do it. I was almost about to lose it and go cuckoo when they locked me up. He said, but then I remembered. He promised me. Peter, thou shalt get old. And I said to myself, to myself, said I, that right now I'm only about mm, 39. Right now I'm only 39. But he told me in St. John chapters 20 and 21, I shout. You know, so that means it matters not what happens tonight or tomorrow because whatever happens, it won't be enough to take me out because he promised me I was going to get old. Why are you worried about paying your bills when he promised you my God shall supply all your... Why are you worried about an evildoer when he said fret not thyself because of evildoers and no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper? Why are you worried about a low-down supervisor when he promised you if God be for you, who can be against you? Shake your neighbors and say, neighbor, you got the promises of God. So take one of his promises The question is, have you been in the Word long enough to know what his promises are? But that's why tonight I came, not as a preacher, but also as uh, an executor of his estate. Yeah, that's why I'm serving tonight as an executor of Jesus' estate. And tonight, y'all are gathered on a Monday night because his will is being read. So you came tonight to see what he left for you in the will. Somebody shout, healing is in the will. Breakthrough is in the will. Promotion is in the will. I'm going to get his will, and tonight... Hey friends, we're coming back in a moment. We have more message. We'll be right back. I came with a word of deliverance. God told me to tell you, your storm is getting ready to pass over. If you can have faith, he's going to turn it around. I wish I had somebody who can praise him with me. Every time someone invests, every time someone's a partner with us, they help us to reach other boys and girls, to reclaim them uh, from child sex trafficking. Whenever someone invests in us, they help us to touch the young boy, young girl uh, who has HIV. They help us to minister to the woman who's been battered, or the child who's been battered that has nowhere to go. So they help us to go out and make a difference in the world. Partnering with E. Dewey Smith Ministries connects you to a growing global outreach, touching the lives of the battered, imprisoned, sexually abused, and needy. But by partnering with us, you really become 
partakers and not just part of the responsibility, but also the blessing. So we're just excited to have persons who want to make a difference for Christ. We're excited about people and transforming the world. Impact the world with your partnership with EDS Ministries. Your monthly donation of $25 or more helps to impact the lives of thousands. Join Carpenters at Work. Become a partner with E. Dewey Smith Ministries today. Because of wonderful people like you, people around the world are hearing the Word of God. People sometimes abort uh, the victory because it does not happen when they expect it to happen. And so Peter was oblivious to what God was doing while he was in that jail cell. He was oblivious to the hand of God, but he had enough peace that he could sleep in that predicament and God can unfold victory in his life. And so for me, as you can see progress in front of you, then it becomes the wind beneath your existential wings to keep pushing because there's light at the end of the, tu of the tunnel. It's not a sprint. It's a marathon. Third and final, that expedition they moved to my clothes. He said, I, I also could sleep like a baby because I had a past provision in God. Past provision, Peter? I said, where is that? He said, well, you missed it unintentionally in your introduction. But it can help you homiletically on this particular point. I said, well, what's that, Peter? He said, well, in Acts 3, John and I were given Holy Ghost power to heal a man at the gate called Beautiful. And after we healed the man, the religious of Jerusalem got mad and threw us in jail. But in chapter 4, we receive pneumatological clemency for convicts. We got released out of prison in chapter 4. He said, I looked around in that jail cell and I said to myself, uh, uh, this, this looks familiar. I'm in chapter 12 now. But eight chapters ago, I was in a similar predicament. And why am I going to trip in chapter 12 about being in jail when I look back eight chapters ago, I was in the same situation and he brought me out. And if he brought me out in chapter 4, I got provision that he'll do it again. Is there, is there anybody around this house tonight? Maybe you've been struggling with some issues, but tonight uh, you're going to look back over your shoulder and see where he's already brought you from. And I don't know who I'm talking to tonight, but thank you, choir, for singing that, uh, that he is turning it around for me. And the Holy Ghost quickened in my spirit as the choir was singing to tell somebody it does not matter how dark the situation may be. It does not matter how deplorable the context may appear. Oh, Lord, I believe that God is, is getting ready to turn some things around. Do I have a witness in the building? Uh, touch somebody and say, uh, he's turning around. Uh, is there anybody here ever been broke before? Uh, let me see you wave your hand. If, if you've ever been broke before, uh, some of us ought to put both hands out, feet up, and borrow somebody else's feet because we've sort of been down before in our lives. Uh, but if you could look back over your own shoulder, Oh, Lord, you ought to be able to testify, yeah, that it ain't no secret what God can do, because what he, what he, what he, what he done for us, he'll do the same thing for you, and I don't know. About y'all tonight, but I've had many tears and sorrows. Oh, yeah, I've had washing for tomorrow. There have been times when I didn't write from wrong. But in every situation, ooh, ooh, 
Hallelujah. He give me blessed consolation. He lets me know that I am his own. And so I thank my God for my mountains. Yeah. I thank God for every valley. Yeah. I thank him for the storms that he's already brought me through. Because if I never had a problem, I would not know that God could solve them. I wouldn't know what faith in God's word can do. Look at somebody, shake their hand and say, neighbor, tonight, in spite of what you're going through, I speak peace over your life. Peace in your finances. Peace in your body. Peace in your relationship. And peace on the job. Paul talks about, let us run this race. You know, getting the process of my victory. That word in Greek is the word agon or agon. We get the English word agony from it. And so as I'm walking step by step, it is not an easy, smooth walk. But as I keep putting one foot in front of the other, even Jesus, he talks about some lepers. He says, and as they went, they were healed. Sometimes he could touch somebody and instantaneously their situation turned around. But some healings, some breakthroughs, some deliverances, they happen as we go. And so I think as we go, as we keep moving, we can find happiness. So if, you, so if you're stuck now, just put one foot in front of the other. Don't just keep staying, having a pity party. Get up. Put one foot in front of the other. And as you take one step, you may not think you have the strength to take another step. And you take another step. And you take another step. And then you look back and say, look where you brought me from. So it's one step at a time. One day at a time. One step at a time. You may not see the whole cake. may not get the whole process. But one step at a time. And every day you get closer and closer to the realization of your victory and your ultimate breakthrough. It's already given to us. Thanks be to God which has given us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Just keep stepping and walking toward it. You know what the Lord did? Because Peter had enough faith, the Lord sent the angel to deliver Peter out of the jail. And as I take my seat here tonight, I came with a word of deliverance. God told me to tell you, your storm is getting ready to pass over. If you can have faith, he's going to turn it around. I wish I had somebody who can praise him with me. I said, I wish I had somebody who wanted to take a minute and give God praise for the deliverance that's on the way tonight. I got to get back to Atlanta. But would you look at that neighbor and shout neighbor. Tonight is the first night. But I declare and prophesy that your life will never be the same because you're coming out and I'm coming out with you. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I wish y'all stopped acting so bougie and looking at me like I'm crazy. Grab that neighbor's hand for the last time and shout, neighbor, we're getting ready to put praise on it. Say, neighbor, this next shout is for your breakthrough. This next shout is for your peace. Say, neighbor, when the preacher counts to three, I'm going to shout until prison wall open. I'm going to shout till breakthrough comes forth. Are y'all ready? I said, are you ready? Do you believe that breakthrough? Ay, 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 ay. Out of our shade. I feel you, Lord. Look at that neighbor. Say, neighbor, this next praise is for your chains that are falling off. Are y'all ready? One. Oh, sure. Y'all ain't ready. Some of y'all got your legs crossed. I say, are you ready? I want you to lose your mind for your neighbor's victory. Are y'all ready? One. Two, three!
Hello friends, I want to thank you so much for allowing us to preach the Word of God and bring the Word into your home. Also to our partners and supporters, thank you for your partnership, thank you for your prayers, thank you for your financial contributions. Because of wonderful people like you, people around the world are hearing the Word of God. Let me hear from you today. My time is far spent, but always remember this, you and I must remain living hope for the world. God bless you and may it keep you. Learn to lead a life of peace with Dr. Dewey's message, Sleep Like a Baby. Peter slept like a baby. I believe Herod was wide awake. I believe the Jews were wide awake. I believe the jailers were wide awake. I know the church was awake, but Peter, the one who's actually on death row, has enough peace. Why are you worried about a low-down supervisor when he promised you, if God be for you, who can be against you? Shake your neighbors and say, neighbor, you got the promises of God. So take one of his promises. Experience joy in the midst of struggle. Order your copy of this dynamic message on CD or DVD. When you write us, visit our website or call 844-EDS-HOPE. Every time someone invests, every time someone's a partner with us, they help us to reach other boys and girls, to reclaim them uh, from child sex trafficking. Whenever someone invests in us, they help us to touch the young boy, the young girl uh, who has HIV. They help us to minister to the woman who's been battered, or the child who's been battered that has nowhere to go. So they help us to go out and make a difference in the world. Partnering with E. Dewey Smith Ministries connects you to a growing global outreach, touching the lives of the battered, imprisoned, sexually abused, and needy. But by partnering with us, you really become partakers and not just part of the responsibility, but also the blessing. So we're just excited to have persons who want to make a difference for Christ. We're excited about people and transform the world. Impact the world with your partnership with EDS Ministries. Your monthly donation of $25 or more helps to impact the lives of thousands. Join Carpenters at Work. Become a partner with E. Dewey Smith Ministries today. Because of wonderful people like you, People around the world are hearing the Word of God. Meet Dr. E. Dewey Smith in any of these great locations. July 1st in Kansas City, Missouri for the 2014 Auxiliaries and Ministry Kojic Convention. July 2nd in Durham, North Carolina at World Overcomers Christian Church. July 7th through 10th in Dallas, Texas for the 19th Annual E.K. Bailey International Preaching Conference. July 9th through 11th for the 21st Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship International in Atlanta, Georgia. For more information on any of these great events, visit edeweysmith.org or call 844-EDS-HOPE. Next time on Living Hope. And you can tell when you're caught up in carpentry, when your house is bigger than the church building, you're caught up in the kingdom. When you can drive a 2014 Benz, but the church can't afford a van, you can tell you got problems with carpentry. And maybe that's why the church can't get any further, because you want to be a king. But not serve. Sure.